Now we'd like to see your creativity come alive in a book you illustrated. Joelle, please read Libby Loves Science. So this is the book I illustrated, Libby Loves Science. Let's get into the story. Libby loved science. She loved mixing, pouring, measuring, and stirring. Whipping up ingredients and making delicious things to eat was one of Libby's favorite ways to experiment. Rainbow pancakes taste way better than plain ones, she told her family. And sometimes it was true. At school, Libby's science teacher, Mr. Darwin, taught the class about chemistry. Libby loved chemistry because it is all about mixing, pouring, measuring, and stirring. Not all chemical reactions occur at the same rate, said Mr. Darwin. Uh-oh, said Libby. Looks like ours reacted too much. Remember, your measurements need to be precise, said Mr. Darwin. But it's okay. Mistakes can lead to discoveries. And sometimes making mistakes is way more fun than cleaning up. One day, Mr. Darwin made an important announcement. We are in charge of the science booth at our school's fall festival, he said. Everyone was excited. The fall festival was fun, and Libby liked the science booth the best. Yay! We will have the best booth ever, said Libby. This year, the booth that gets the most visitors and collects the most tickets wins an ice cream party, said Mr. Darwin. We need volunteers to run our booth. Libby, Finn, and Rosa jumped up from their desks. We'll do it, said Libby. Libby, Finn, and Rosa met at Libby's house after school. We absolutely need to win, said Libby. Just imagine, an ice cream party. I love ice cream, said Rosa. Competing with the bouncy house won't be easy, said Finn. I think we can do really fun experiments that everyone will want to try, said Libby. Cool, we can decorate the booth too, said Rosa. I have tons of art supplies, said Finn. We can make our booth really stand out. Libby, Finn, and Rosa searched for fun experiments. They made a list of possibilities and voted for their three favorites. Finn decided to make giant bubbles. Rosa wanted to mix fluffy slime. And Libby chose to launch a rocket. I can't wait for the festival, she said. Finally, the day of the festival arrived. Libby, Finn, and Rosa got there early to help Mr. Darwin set up the science booth. Finn hauled in hula hoops, dish soap, corn syrup, and a kiddie pool. Rosa carried a basket of shaving cream, glue, saline solution, and glitter. Libby brought baking soda, vinegar, and empty water bottles. They decorated the booth with posters, signs, and science stuff. When the festival opened, the cotton candy booth was swamped right away. The dunk tank was a huge hit. The face painting team was the one to beat. The festival was crowded with friends and families and teachers having fun. No one's coming to our booth, said Finn. Maybe everyone thinks science is boring, said Rosa. Science is never boring, Libby said. We just need to show them chemistry is fun. I know, said Finn. Let's blow some giant bubbles. Bigger the better, said Rosa. Finn filled the kiddie pool with water while Rosa mixed in the soap. The secret ingredient is corn syrup, Libby said. Yep, it makes the bu bubbles a bajillion times stronger, said Finn. Next, let's make some slime, said Rosa to the small crowd that had gathered to make bubbles. Extra glitter equals extra sparkle, added Finn. It's important to add the saline just a little bit at a time, said Libby. That's what makes it extra squishy, said Rosa. Now for the grand finale, said Rosa. Our rocket will be out of this world, said Finn. We will win for sure. We use extra baking soda. The rocket might go even higher, said Libby. Science is a blast, said Rosa. When Libby added in the baking soda, the liquid started to bubble. When the bottle filled up, the rocket zoomed high into the air. Whoosh! Unfortunately, it sprayed liquid everywhere. It sprayed all over the kids waiting in line. It sprayed way more than Libby predicted. Everyone got soaking wet and ran away. The face painting booth still has a huge line, said Finn. I don't think we have enough tickets. I'm sorry, said Libby. I thought the rocket would be awesome. At least we got a big reaction, said Rosa. The next day, Principal Neil announced the winner of the Fall Festival Booth Contest. The ice cream party goes to the Art Club, she said. Their face painting booth won by a landslide. Everyone cheered, even Libby, who felt she'd let her science class down. Mr. Darwin called Libby, Finn, and Rosa to his desk. You three did a great job on the booth, he said. 
But we didn't win the ice cream party, mumbled Libby. That doesn't mean we can't celebrate how hard you tried, Mr. Darwin said. Any ideas? Maybe we can have our own party, Rosa said. What kind of party, Ben asked. An ice cream party. And we can make our own ice cream. Libby jumped up. And I know exactly what we need. Libby wrote a list of ingredients on the board. Rosa borrowed sugar from the teacher's lounge. Ben ran to the cafeteria for ice, vanilla, and milk. Mr. Darwin grabbed rock salt and freezer bags from the supply closet. Libby walked the class through the steps in the recipe. She even added lots of colors because rainbow ice cream usually tastes better than plain. This is delicious, said Ben. Sometimes the best reactions aren't always the first reaction, Mr. Darwin said. Because ice cream is cool, said Rosa. Yeah, said Libby, and science is cool too. And that is the end.